Say hello to Eder Campazano. He covers what is trending online for the Oregonian, the paper of record for the state. He recently did a write-up on Milo Yiannopoulos' appearance at the University of Oregon, except Campazano wasn't actually there. In fact, no Oregonian reporters were there. Mr. Campazano did his entire report based off of tweets sent out by reporters from the student newspaper, the Daily Emerald. Note they already had to retract one of the tweets. And Campazano's headline for the article? Milo Yiannopoulos at the University of Oregon I don't want any Muslims in the country. Well, it's true that Milo did say that. But I don't really want any Muslims in the country. Um, What Mr. Camposano leaves out is the reason why. Consider a few things. 52, 51, 52% of British Muslims, we're not talking about Muslims in Syria, we're not talking about Muslims in Iraq, we're not talking about Muslims in, in, you know, even in Egypt, in Britain, think that homosexual sex should be against the law. This is a direct assault on who and what I am. And this is people that live in the street next to me. They believe that I sh- that my sexuality should be against the law. Progressives have nothing to say about that. 39% of British Muslims believe that a woman should always obey her husband. Feminists have nothing to say about that. 25% of British Muslims believe that um, Sharia law should be enacted in the countries in which they live, um, which, under certain circumstances, renders a woman's opinion half or even less of that of a man's. Feminists, likewise, have nothing to say about that. I found it interesting that Mr. Camposano omitted this key piece of information, so I decided to ask him about it. So you're the guy that did the write-up on the uh, Milo Yiannopoulos thing. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 I did the tweet, tweet aggregate. Right, right, right. It's, it's interesting. Your article didn't mention why he said that he didn't want any Muslims in the country. I, that's kind of beside the point. Like, the fact that he said it on shoddy logic, to me, that's, that's enough in and of itself. I mean... Well, the reason why he feels that way is because a recent poll of British Muslims... Of British Muslims. ...say yeah. that 52% of them want homosexual, homosexuality to be illegal. Yeah, and you had a pretty large coalition of conservative Christians here saying that they wanted to outlaw gay marriage... So, like, it's, I don't know, that's kind of a good apples to apples comparison of, like, why you don't just discriminate on someone based on their beliefs. Like, oh, hey, these people don't want this, so we're just going to kick them out of the country. Right, right, right. But I find it interesting that you left that part out of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger crimes have been committed. Yeah. Huh? Bigger crimes have been committed than him leaving that out. I, 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 I just wanted to ask him about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Good meeting you guys. Notice how he immediately deflected the question and turned it around on a different group. Then says he didn't think it was relevant to include the reason why Milo said what he said. So this is what passes for credible news these days. A reporter who isn't even at the event, relying on tweets from college students and leaving out key pieces of information. This is why the legacy media is on its way out, and the new media is on its way in. For more on this story and others, check out youtube.com slash laughingatliberals.